I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hey, hello everybody everywhere. Praise God all over this earth. I am David Weeder, and this is Lynn Weeder, and you are watching or listening to the Covenant Living Broadcast. Praise God. Everything that a Christian does in their life should be with the, the, the idea of covenant firmly in their minds because that's what this is, is a book of covenants, covenants between God and man our covenant is actually ratified between God and His Son, Jesus, with us as beneficiaries. So there is no way that you can break our covenant. Now, you can get out of fellowship with it, but you cannot break it because it is between God and Jesus. Praise God. Whew, that's a whole different teaching. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're glad you're here with us today. Make that cup of coffee or a glass of tea or whatever and grab your Bible, notebook, and pull up to the to the table and let's get into the word. Father, we thank you so much for everybody within the sound of our voice. I'm asking you, sir, minister to them today beyond measure. Bless them financially. Bless them in their bodies, in their minds, in their families, in every area of life. Reveal to them the keys and the the strategies of the kingdom and the laws in which we operate so that they can go from one area of victory to a higher level of victory to a higher level of victory. For everything in you is increase and in victory. And we thank you so much for it. We give you the praise and honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, we're studying about faith. <laughs> Glory to God. We've had a great couple weeks. We're going to have a great few more weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we answered the question, but why do you teach so much about faith, Brother Weeder? Well, that's because that's what I'm assigned to do. The Lord has, has called us to perpetuate my heritage of the word of faith, and that's what we're going to do throughout this earth. And right now, right now, as you're listening to this, this this broadcast is going through uh, a parts of Asia, Indonesia, Japan, Thailand, Taiwan, North South Korea, mm. China, through shortwave radio. It's on YouTube. It's on audio podcasts. It's on Direct TV, Dish TV. I mean, the Lord has really done wonderful and marvelous strategic things for us and for this ministry to get this uncompromised word of faith throughout the earth. And we're so thrilled and we're so happy that you are a part of it, either through just watching, praying for us, contributing financially to help expand and, and open more doors. However, however you are, just the fact that you're listening, watching us and joining us makes you a part of it. And we're so thankful and we're, 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 we're grateful for you and we're, we appreciate you. And, and we love you. We just do. We just love you. Which goes right into today's <laughs> message because it's uh, about love and about faith. Open your Bibles to our golden text of, of Mark 11, mm. 22 through 25. Mark chapter 11, beginning in verse 22. This is how faith works. Jesus answering unto them, saith unto them, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith, or have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, this is the Master speaking, I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Keep number two to studying faith, one of the, the number two fundamentals of faith is 
faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. Why is that? Turn over to Galatians chapter 5. These things aren't haphazard. There's always a reason. Now, we may or may not at the current point in time understand the reason, but I guarantee you, if you hold it before the Lord and you keep with it and you keep praying, particularly in the Spirit about it, the, the Word says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that when we pray in the Spirit, we, do, we pray divine mysteries to the Father. So if it's a mystery to you, Spend some time praying in the Spirit and let the Holy Ghost reveal to you. He'll show you exactly why it works. You may not know right now, but don't get frustrated. Don't run away. Don't turn your back. Just stay with it. Stay in the Spirit and let Him bring you the answer. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 is why faith won't work in an unforgiving heart. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision but faith which works by love. Praise God. So faith works by love. That's why it won't work in an unforgiving heart because love forgives. Love powers faith. It's kind of like um, car runs by gas or electric. <laughs> but no gas Car no run. A car no work with a no gas. Well, with no love, faith no work. You can try, you can think about it, but the power is not there. It works by love. Well, think about it for a minute. First John says God is love. Faith's not going to work without God. It's His faith. So it's not going to work without love. It's just as simple as that. Faith works by love. That's one of the reasons, you know, there's, there's things that you can glean from examples in the book. Mm -hmm. And when it talks about the woman that had, it's not the, it's no, she's no longer the woman with the issue of blood. She got delivered from that. The woman that had the issue of blood, one of the things that we know about her is that she forgave all of those physicians that took all her money <laughs> and she still didn't get any better, but only grew worse. We know she forgave. Well, how do you know that? Because her Jesus said, worked. Jesus said it was her faith, not his anointing, not his power. It was the anointing, but Jesus said it was her faith that made pull on the anointing that made her whole. Well, her faith would not have grabbed a hold of that healing anointing if it hadn't been powered by love, which means she had to forgive all those doctors, okay? That's how we know that, and that's how you can put things like this together. Let the Holy Spirit teach and show you these things. I was, <clears throat> I had to get plain, and I don't mean that in a sense that they were resisting it at all, I don't mean that at all, but recently I had an opportunity to minister in Ukraine and to a group of, of pastors that were, uh, many of them were from the war zone, um, active fighting war zone, <laughs> and they had seen things uh, uh, that nobody should have to see. Um, and it's really easy, particularly in the face of the atrocities of war that can take place, um, to get to a place of hatred mm -hmm. uh, in regards to the opposing forces, let's put it that way. And I, you know, I was teaching faith, <laughs> you know? And you can't teach faith unless you, you let the people know this, that they can't be walking in unforgiveness. I don't care what the other person did. You, you must forgive them. Well, you don't know what they did to me. I know what they're still doing to you. <laughs> Right. Even though the situation may have happened years, decades ago, if you're still holding on to that and you're still walking in unforgiveness towards that person, even though that person has moved on <laughs> long, they probably don't even think about you anymore, may not have thought about you in years. 
in cases of a violent crime or something, probably don't even know your name. But as long as you're walking in unforgiveness, they're still having that damaging effect on your life and having control mm. over your life. And, 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 and because of that, they aren't, but you are making your faith ineffective. Well, and even in Mark eleven twenty five, it says, you forgive so God can forgive you. And even if you think you have lived a perfect life or haven't done anything that bad, that forgiveness still basically gums up the work mm -hmm. or the lack of forgiveness. And I wanna, I wanna make something perfectly clear here as well. Forgiveness was provided when Jesus went to the cross. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness for everything, everything, imaginable or unimaginable, forgiveness was provided that day when Jesus died on the cross. But what happens is God can't get that forgiveness to you until you forgive because you're, whole, you're closing yourself down. You're holding on to unforgiveness and he can't get it in there to you even though he provided it. It's there for the taking. Once you forgive by faith, mm -hmm. there's no accident that that comes at the end of the instruction on how to work, operate by faith because it takes faith to forgive. Right. And you apply those principles of faith and that you can walk in forgiveness, even if your mind's trying to give you a hard time about it. Now you, you get a, a, some kind of a funny, weird feeling or you feel animosity towards somebody. That's the fancy word for getting mad at them. And you mm. get mad at somebody and you think, and Satan comes in there right away and he's like, I see there, you didn't forgive him. No, 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 no. Just because you, let's put this over in the area of healing. A lot of people, particularly in the word of faith, understand just because there still may be a symptom lingering does not yeah. mean that you're not healed. It doesn't mean you're sick. It just means that there's a symptom trying to linger on. It's, it's a lot of people call them a lying symptom. Hmm. <laughs> the devil will try to sneak a little something in there to make see if you'll bite and take it. Well, and let's also make a distinction here. You can forgive somebody and not continue to give them access mm -hmm. to you or your family. Absolutely. Let's take a woman who has been molested by a relative and nothing was ever done about it. Nobody wanted to acknowledge it. She can forgive that relative, but she doesn't have to allow him to be around her daughter. Mm -hmm. That's protecting the daughter, but she doesn't have to have any animosity towards him, but she's not opening the door for him to repeat those actions. This goes back to, um, to me and my thinking anyway, that mm. when you said that it brought it up to the example of going back to, to war, how can, because the Bible says in, in number, the book of Numbers is if you go to war before the Lord, you'll return and be guiltless. Mm -hmm. well, how can you go to war, kill somebody and be guiltless? Well, it has to do with covenant. Now, if you go to war and you hate that person, and the reason that you kill that person in war is because you mm. hate them, then you're not, you don't come back guiltless unless you, un until you, you receive your forgiveness for it, plead the blood of Jesus over it. But how can things like that happen? How can you separate the two? Well, an example I always think of, and it's just a, it's a marvelous example, is I, love her. Now I love you. I'm commanded to love. I love. Okay. I got nothing against you. As far as I know, you're a great person, but I do have a covenant with her. Now, remember I told you at the beginning of this, I didn't know why I was telling you this, <laughs> but at the <laughs> beginning I was telling you, this is covenant book. Everything in here, including Walking in love and walking in forgiveness is a covenant issue with God, okay? You're able to do it because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and the covenant that's made. You can do this by faith. I have a covenant to protect her. I, I stood up before God 
and promised, I swore, to protect her even if it comes down to me giving my own life to protect her. I'll do it. That's just the way it is, <laughs> okay? Now, I love you, but don't try to hurt her because I will do whatever it takes to stop you from hurting her. Now, if, if I can break an arm or something and, and, and talk you out of it, <laughs> so to speak, it's yeah, fine, great. We could go on with your broken arm and leave her alone. And okay? if then you repent, he can pray for you for your arm. That's right, I'll pray for your arm to be healed. But if it comes down right to it, down right to it, <laughs> if it comes right down to it <laughs> and you force the issue, I, in order to stop you from hurting her, I will kill you graveyard dead and have not one ounce of animosity towards you, but I have to protect her. I gave my word to God. Now, I'll, I'll sit there and pray over you. I'll try to get you to, to, to receive Jesus and get born again before you take that last breath, but I will kill you and go home and sleep like a baby tonight. Won't bother me a it. Why? Covenant. Now, you have a covenant with God, and it doesn't matter what somebody has done to you or done against you or, or whatever. God has said, if you'll forgive that person, trust me, walk in faith about these things. I will take care of you. I will heal you and I will deliver you. That's your covenant. So really, there's no reason to hold something against somebody because God's provided the other side of that. Mm -hmm. And as long as you hold on to this, you can't get over to that. That's the bottom line. Everything, God doesn't tell us to do anything because he doesn't want us to have fun or he doesn't want us to whatever. He does it because this way is death and this way is life and joy and abundance and happiness. Don't do that. Do this. I think it's so funny. That, you know, he told them even way back the Israelites in Deuteronomy. <laughs> you got you got life, life you, you got death. death, you got blessing, you got cursing. And then he's like, choose life. <laughs> it's just like, it's just, it's not only an open book test, he just gives you the answer, you know, and they still a lot of times didn't choose it. But you need to choose this because it's the key to your, your faith being strong and powerful. And that's what you live by. So you need it strong and powerful. Look over a couple of pages to the right, look in mm. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Do it with a, just do it with a vengeance, man. Just don't put up with one bit of it. And be you kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Now, Translate and meditate that word Christ. It's not Jesus' last name. The word Christ is a Greek word. It just simply means the anointed one and the anointing itself. Both of them are referred to equally in that word. So you have to go by context and see which way it's leaning more heavily towards. For example, in Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ, but it doesn't say who. In the King James, it does not say who. It says, which strengthens me. Well, in that particular case, it's leaning more towards the, the anointing, the power of God itself on flesh, doing only what God can do. <laughs> so it's that way in this scripture. Let's, let's look at it again even as God, for the sake of the anointing, has forgiven you. You can't expect faith and the anointing, the power of God, to work in unforgiveness and wrath and strife and all of those things. Well, in that bitterness and wrath and anger, 
it just eats people away. We all know that. Even if you haven't dug into the word and found in Proverbs what it says about bitterness and wrath and anger, we know we've seen people who just are bitter and it dries them up. It takes all the joy out of their life. And so he's telling you to forgive that person for your sake so that you can have that joy, so you can have that peace. Not because it it, it's, a lot of times people think, well, if I forgive them, that's letting them off the hook. No, it's letting you off the hook because they've still got a hook in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. (laughs) Not too many and of us like that, I like, but that's okay. <laughs> I like, bro- I like He's Brother Jesse Duplan and says, no, no, you take too long. <laughs> I can fix this right now. <laughs> I can make a phone call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Brother David, I just don't, I just can't do that. I just, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I know what you're talking about, but it's not something, you're not talking about something that I can do. Hold on now. Turn over to Romans chapter 5. If you are born again, child of the living God, then Romans chapter 5 applies to you. Chapter 5, verse 5, And hope makes not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So the ungodly became godly, and the heart full of hate became a heart full of love. For the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. You have the capabilities to do these things. What you're, you know, I'm reminded of the story that Brother Hagen told about the lady who came up to him. He was teaching along these lines, and he's teaching on love and forgiveness. And she came up to him, and she said, you're, you, um, what did she say? She said, <clears throat> you've confused she said, you, me. You've confused me. Yeah, yeah, you've, you've really confused me. <laughs> Brother Hagen said, no, no, you were confused before I got here. <laughs> I'm just shedding light on it. <laughs> well, you know, the truth is the truth. But anyway, he said, what seems to be the problem? And she said, I hate my mother-in-law. And he said, do you now? She said, yeah, I hate her. He said, well, then I guess you need to get born again. Oh, Brother Hagin, I'm I'm born again. I'm spirit-filled, speaking tongues, believe in healing. She was a minister. That's right, she was. Yeah, her and her, her husband both were ministers. And he said, well, no. He said, uh, the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart, and uh, you've got to forgive. I hate her. (laughs) And so in the process of time, I think it was like the next day or something, they ended up having a meal together. And boy, Brother Hagin just wasn't (laughs) wasn't letting her off the hook at all. He said, "Uh, no, 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 you're going to have to get born again if you hate your your mother-in-law. Oh, Brother Hagin, I'm born again. He said, okay, so they tell you you what, um, do something for me. You're a minister, you you know God, you know. He said, you look me right in the eye and you say the words, I hate my mother-in-law. And he said, pay attention down in here, down in this area and tell me what's going on. So she looked him right now, boy, she did it. Boy. She looked him right in and she said, I hate my mother-in-law. He said, all right, now what, what, what do you think? She said, ah, it's just... Something a little scratchy down there. It's just not quite right. He said, yeah, I know. (laughs) He said, you're born again. The love of God's been shed abroad in your heart, but your mind's giving you problems. You're not walking in love. You're not walking in forgiveness. So your spirit, your spirit's got that scratching at you, trying to, trying to grab you. Say, hey, wait, stop. Don't do that. (laughs) And so he was able to minister to her and, um, well, and you really walked in forgiveness by faith. And then said it with her mouth and started confessing, I love her. <laughs> but it got easier, it got easier. And the next thing she knew, she just, just fell in love with her mother-in-law. 
because the love of God was in there all the time. So you may be having trouble up here. You may be having trouble with thoughts, but you've got to release your faith. You've got to walk in love and forgiveness by faith. But here's the part, and here's where so many people miss it. You got to speak it. You got to say it. And you may have to say it two, three, four, five hundred times a day. And for, I love that person. I tell you, I just love that person. And pray for them. Pray scriptures for them, not kill them, Lord. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the right one. <laughs> pray for them. Kiss, confess with your mouth, I love them, I love them, I love them. And before you know it, you'll be passing them on the street and you want to go over and give them a hug and you just don't even know what came over you. But you've got to get to that point. You've got to love by faith in order for your faith to be strong. If you're going to believe for healing, you're going to believe for your children, you're going to believe for your marriage, you're going to believe for anything that takes faith to reach hold and grab hold of what grace has provided, you've got to walk in forgiveness and love. Otherwise, the faith just simply isn't strong enough to do it. Just the way it is. <laughs> hey, don't go anywhere now. Hey, we'll be right back. DavidWeeder.org Discover the calling and mission of our ministry. Get to know us and the vision God has given us. Watch the Covenant Living broadcast and connect to our YouTube channel. Consider becoming a partner and supporting our outreaches. Learn about our teaching tools and resources. DavidWeeder.org, your connection for all of this and much more. Hey, during the break, Lynn brought something up and I just want to, I, I do want to address it. You know, she said earlier in the broadcast about you can forgive someone, you can walk in love, but that doesn't mean that you need to be close to them or in close proximity. She, she brought up the case about a, maybe a family member and a sexual assault and things like that. That does, what I said there about you want to go over and give them a hug doesn't override that. If that person hasn't changed, then the Lord does not expect you to just automatically put yourself in danger. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a heart condition. I'm not talking about physical proximity. There's sometimes that uh, it's a whole lot easier to love and walk in love from a little bit of a distance and, and that needs to happen. But hey, you know, there's so much that goes into these, these laws of the kingdom. You cannot dock and address everything in one broadcast. <laughs> and that's why that website is there. Now, you know, everything that we teach, all of our broadcasts, the, whether it's audio, video, it, everything is on that website. It's there for you. The partners have provided it, so take advantage of it. Spend some time, just root around, dig in there. You can, you can listen to the Word 24 hours a day. Just go from one message to another to another. You can also find out about upcoming speaking engagements and things that we've had, ministry opportunities, and just that's kind of like Grand Central. So go over there and take advantage of it. Until next week, don't forget that God loves you and that we love you and that Jesus is Lord. Thank you partners and friends for helping make this broadcast possible. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. You can also listen to our broadcast on iTunes. For more information about our ministry, contact us at davidweeder.org 